G'day guys, it's Yanni Mooney here, director and auctioneer at Yanni Mooney Property. Today we're talking about the auction method of sale, the best method of sale, my favorite topic. Let's get into it. The best way to describe an auction campaign is in three stages. Stage one, stage two, and stage three. Stage one is generally three to four weeks of marketing of open homes, meeting buyers, getting them ready for the auction itself. Generally they have three to four weeks to get the marketing sorted, get the feedback, and get buyers ready for the auction day, which leads me into stage two. Stage three will come to uh, a little bit later on. So stage one, as I said, we're meeting buyers, we allow uh, a marketing campaign over a calendar. Now the benefit of this method of sale is the structure, is the planning. We plan out all the dates in advance. Uh, literally, we sit down with the sellers, we book in our marketing, launch marketing here. We book in all our open homes at the start. And this is just an example. Try and do midweek if we can, and Sundays if possible. Getting buyers through, meeting them, and allowing as many times as possible for buyers to get through the property to inspect. The last week we have book in the auction date. We also have a reserve set meeting. Now each and every week the, the vendor gets a marking report, generally on a Tuesday. And that report has the buyers that came through the open home, the feedback, and all of the main things about the property. Our vendors know exactly what's going on, exactly what we know. So when it comes to strategy meeting and setting that reserve, they're on the same page, we're on the same page to set the appropriate reserve. So as you can see, there's structure. We book it all in at the start. Comparing that to a price campaign, uh, putting a price on the property, all you know is when you're gonna do the first open home. You don't know when it's gonna sell, and you don't know when your next open home is. Generally, the process of that strategy, I see some agents do, they book in one open home, it didn't sell. Next week, they're scratching their heads, should we book in another open home again? There's structure here, we know when the open homes are, they don't change, this calendar goes on the client's fridge, it's done, it's dusted. So that's stage, stage one, getting the buyers through and getting them involved. Stage two is the auction itself where we have multiple bidders bidding against each other to put that, push that price upwards. So at the, at the moment we're uh, seeing record number of registered bidders buying, getting, buyers getting involved in the auction process. So another benefit of this method of sale is we don't need to put a price on it from the start. So going back to that calendar, we don't need to set a price at, at week one or when we list the property. The only time we need to know a price is when we're setting that reserve. So we had an example uh, a few weeks back where the recent sales, the sales where we sh shared with the vendors was from 600,000 to $780,000 of recent comparable sales. So the point is, where do you put the price in that range? Obviously, we're wanting to get the best price possible, uh, but it's very hard to pinpoint, especially a piece of real estate. You know, you take 10 buyers through, generally you're gonna get 10 different opinions in regards to price. Um, if you go too high, and there's nothing wrong with it, but if you go too high and go, you know what, let's go 850, let's try our best, what that can do is actually eliminate buyers in, in week one and week two and, and put buyers off looking at the property. And we know week one and week two are when you're gonna meet the main buyer. So going too high is a risk, going too low is a risk, and you might undersell the property. This process, the only time you need to set a price is after you've got four weeks or however long of marking reports of buyer feedback and you set that price before the auction. Now the reserve price is the figure that the bidding, if it does fall under that figure, it simply won't sell. So it's your safety net. Now that leads me into stage three. So stage three is should the property, let's just say the reserve price is 600,000, should 550K 
come on the day, we simply pass a property in and convert it over to stage three. So that's when we pass it in and we set another uh, deadline for the buyers. You know, generally 24, 48 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, the property's passed in today. We're simply gonna take offers to the sellers in the next one or two days, whatever it may be. So you generally get a lot of interest there. And if we do go to stage three, normally we would look at securing a sale very shortly after the auction because of all the competition, all the interest, and should it not reach that price, we negotiate a sale. Um, now at stage three as well, I always just say to my sellers, why on earth would you not just allow 28 days to run buyers through to go for the best price possible? And you know what, if it doesn't sell, then you can put your price on in stage three, but you might as well try for the best price in stage one and stage two. And if you really wanna put a price on and it doesn't exceed your expectations, put it on in stage three. You can put a price on there, should it not sell at auction and not sell in that negotiation after. Now also looking at the auction itself, this is where record prices happen. I've seen so many stories uh, as an agent, but also as an auctioneer of sellers selling so much more than what they thought was possible. A property, as we all know, is worth as, as much as someone's willing to pay. And when you add competition amongst that and add bidding and uh, all of that energy, generally speaking, we're seeing record prices that could not be achieved with just a price on the property. So it's really, really good to see. But the main reason I actually like auction, it's not because of these record so, uh, prices, and that's a great thing as well, it's the conditions of sale. So the benefit of the auction process is there's no cooling off period, which is a five day standard clause on every contract in Queensland. That means if a buyer puts a, an offer on the property, they've got up to five days. If they get cold feet on the fourth day, they pull out. There's no building and pest or body corp search, which is generally 14 days. And you might have a terrific property and that's all well and good, but I have seen in so many uh, circumstances, buyers take this as a hostage scenario where they find a mark on a, on a vanity in the bathroom and they come back to you on day 13 after the contract sign and they say, we want 20 grand off uh, you know, the contract because of this, this and this. And there's no finance. So finance is cheap at the moment, but banks are backlogged. Generally, we're looking at 28 to even 35, 42 days, I had one the other day, 42 days uh, to wait for the finance to come through. So 35 days on average there. The benefit of the auction process is there's no conditions on the contract of sale. The minute the hammer falls, it's done, it's dusted. You move on with life, you know that you're negotiating to what's accepted on that day. I've seen in so many circumstances where, you know, you put a price on the property, buyer comes through, they, they, they offer you a, a price, you accept it, and then they add all these conditions. And then it gets to day 34, and the solicitor calls you and says, look, unfortunately, we haven't been able to finance. Two options, pull out, or we want another extension. Also, in that conditional period, you can't execute another deal. You're bound to that contract, and if it comes through, it comes through. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So the benefit, obviously, is no conditions at all on the sale. When you set that reserve price, the minute the hammer falls, the deposit's paid, it's all done, it's all dusted. I get it all the time, auction's so stressful. You know, we don't wanna to go to auction because it's very stressful. Well, we talked about the, pro uh, the procedure and the, and the process before. If you set it all and plan it all, it's actually not stressful at all. What is stressful is accepting a conditional contract and someone pulling out 34 days after and you've stopped open homes and the momentum stopped and you've got to get going again. So there's no conditions at all. It's a done, dusted sale. Uh, now, coming back here, stage one, stage two, and stage three we've spoken about. Now, you may get offers in stage one. We see it all the time in the you know, three to four week period. Buyers want to come through and say, look, we want to make an offer so it doesn't go to auction. That's great too. The great thing there is most of the time and all the time really, there's no conditions on the sale. If, a, if an offer is made in stage one, the buyers know that it has to be on these conditions. There's no conditions on the contract. The minute the contract's signed, it's done, it's dusted. The, the buyers know that why on earth would a, uh, a seller accept a contract prior to auction if it's not on these conditions. So really, really benefit uh, of sale. I've actually never understood why a buyer comes to uh, your property, your biggest asset, and they demand what they want. 
They demand what price they're going to pay. They demand what conditions they're going to offer and even what deposit and settlement. I've never made sense of it. I much rather coming to my sellers the night before the auction when we set this reserve price leading up to the auction day, I sit down and ask a few things. I ask what the reserve price is, what will you sell for, what the deposit is, and what the settlement terms are. You set the conditions of sale, not the buyers on your biggest asset. This is the way that uh, you know real estate was designed to negotiate. So uh, it's, it's reversing that. Instead of the buyers demanding $1,000 deposit, I'm gonna settle on these terms. You set the terms. And when we rock up to auction day, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to auction today. We see all these registered bidders. The terms and conditions of sale are no conditions, no cooling off period, no buyer inspection, no finance clause. The seller has elected a 45 day settlement and a 10% deposit. Let's get going. On that basis, the seller sets the conditions of sale, which is how it really should be. It's your property, not theirs. So coming back here, that explains the three methods of sale. Now, I do sometimes get one question saying, Yanni, if you don't allow conditions, you're gonna miss out on buyers. Well, I don't think that's necessarily true because if, uh, you know, during stage one, we meet a buyer uh, that simply needs finance or to you know get some due diligence done, we work with them, we point them in the right direction to get them sorted by auction day. Now, if they're not sorted by auction day, we don't miss out on the buyers, that's simply not true. We, I invite all my buyers, even if they're not in a position to bid at auction, I invite them to auction day, and if the property does pass in for any reason, come over to stage three here, I say to them, you'll be able to negotiate. So we don't miss any buyers. Should it pass in, we generally get multiple offers here and get it done, get it dusted. Um, but we don't miss out on any buyers. And in fact, uh, the buyers, the, the best buyers are the ones that are prepared and ready to bid on those terms. Now, we've also had a couple of questions uh, come in, emailed in from sellers and agents as well that I'd like to touch on too. Some of the myths of the industry, or of the method of sale, should I say, that we're gonna debunk now, or at least discuss. Uh, so one's come in and said, you only have, oh, we just covered on that. Uh, if, they're not, if they don't have their finance sorted, you're gonna miss out on them. I think I just covered on, should we not uh, have buyers that are sorted in that time frame? we allow for them anyway. Now, uh, my pr property is not an uh, auction property. It's not unusual. This is probably the number one question I get on the auction process. Look, it's not a mansion on the hill or you know a quirky property. Why would I take it to auction? It's just a standard property. Well, I would actually much rather stay, take a standard two bedroom unit when there's you know 40 on the marketplace for sale, whatever it may be, a standard normal property because your buyer pool for a standard property as it is, is this big. Your buyer pool for a unusual property is generally smaller. So that whole thing of it's not an auction property, it's not unusual, it's a standard property. Well, you're gonna meet more buyers, which will mean uh, you're gonna have more registered bidders, which may mean a higher price. So I don't think it needs to be unusual or different just to take it to auction. This is just a method of sale. This is just how we go about getting the best price with the best conditions. Um, an auction is a lot more expensive than selling with a price. Now that's really not true. So um, yes, in the olden days of real estate to do an auction, agents would sell you on all this marketing, on print media, newspaper, and all of these things. Uh, it's actually no different doing an auction campaign you still get a signboard at the front, you still go on realestate.com and all the portals, you still get brochures, all of those types of things, as you would with a price, as you would with an auction. The only difference is an auctioneer's fee, which can range from 400 to $800, generally speaking. And you know what? I tell you what, that's a pretty good investment when you're looking at selling over your reserve price or getting much more than what you thought. And just touching on that as well, if it's your owner occupied residence, why wouldn't you, and same if it's an investment, why wouldn't you go for the best possible price you can you know, aim for, get the best possible price? It's quite simple. Uh, you know, I, I always say there's only one way you can make money 
uh, tax-free legally in Australia, and that's selling your principal place of residence. So why wouldn't you go for a process that, that aims to get the best price, that gets competitive bidding going? And as I've said before, in my career, I've seen so many people say, this, this has sold so much higher than what I thought. It's uh, you know set me up for life. So why wouldn't you aim for that? And especially if your principal place of residence, aim for every dollar over that you thought you would is a tax-free dollar. Um, as I said, if it's your own owner-occupied residence, obviously you're going to be speaking to your accountant about that. That's a good thing about real estate, getting prices that we never thought we could uh, and doing it the right way. Uh, another question's come in, uh, my property is tenanted and the tenants probably won't allow an auction campaign. I've actually never experienced that at all. Um, I find that if we sit down with the tenants and explain it to them, most tenants actually prefer it because they are a stakeholder in the campaign and we sit down with them as well and outline what, what our intentions are and work with them. But most tenants actually prefer this method of sale, at least in my experience, because they go, you know what, we can see structure, hopefully we don't have building and pests, you know, and then things go on and inspections left, right and centre. We sit down, we, we share the calendar with them, we book in the open home, there's structure, there's a procedure. and. Uh, you know, they're generally on board because they know that they're wanting to move on with their life and, and continue in the property and we're looking for their next landlord as well. Uh, so most tenants are actually on board. Now if they don't, if they allow the open homes and they don't necessarily want the auction on site, we can have it off site, we can have it in an end rooms or, or somewhere else. So that's not a concern. I wouldn't say that be a concern for you not to go to auction. As I said, most tenants are generally in favour of this method of sale. Uh, sellers and also buyers, we don't like auctions. So that's coming from a seller asking that and a buyer asking that. So uh, this is an interesting one. Sellers, we don't like auctions. You know, sellers say that. Well, I guess that that's true in many ways. You know, it might be true for yourself. I've met many people where I've sit down with them for half an hour and they go, Yanni, I, I, I had auctions, I've had a bad experience. The way you've explained it, the way I've seen your auctions, we love the process, we'll do it. So it's about understanding the process. As I said, if you don't sell it there or there, for any reason, don't know why it wouldn't, but uh, in, in, and aiming for those conditions. We got a stage three, you can put your price on there if you really, really want after 28 days. Um, I often say, you know, I don't like keeping my tax receipts in a shoebox, but I know it's beneficial for me as well. So you don't have to be in love with it to know that it's the best way to do something. You've just got to understand it. Most of the time when sellers get it explained properly to them, they go, you know what, I can see that this will be the best way uh, to do what we want to do. Buyers, we don't like auctions. Well, this is a really interesting one, especially in this market, well, in any market, but in this market. Buyers, oh, no, we don't, we're not gonna bid on the property, we don't like auctions. Well, me as a buyer, when I go through a property, especially in a hot market as we are now, uh, you know, asking the, property, uh, the, the agent what price is on the property, and they say, oh, it's on for 900,000, just to let you know, we've got five other offers on the property, and we need a de decision by this afternoon. Then I'll simply ask, uh, Mr. Agent, what, uh, what price, uh, are the other offers or what do I have to pay to get the property? I can't tell you what it is, it's behind closed doors, but you just gotta submit your best offer. I've never understood that as a buyer. Why wouldn't you wanna to come to auction day, register to bid, see all your competition there and know where the bid is at? There's full transparency with this as a buyer preferred to the other way. So I, you know, I get the question, but not really. Uh, you see your competition here, you see where the bid is, it's the most transparent way to buy property. So in fact, me as a buyer, I'd prefer to go to an auction and know exactly where the bid is at and see it all unfold in front of me. Um, and that's the last question. So uh, just touching base back on the uh, three stages. Stage one, simply doing three to four weeks, uh, meeting the buyers, setting our uh, campaign at the start and really moving through it. Once a week you get a marketing report as a seller, knowing exactly where the interest is coming in. Obviously if there's a range on the property before uh, the marketing campaign and you don't know where to list your property, you'll get all the feedback come reserve time. You'll know exactly uh, where the, uh, the interest is. You book in your open homes, they're set, they're done, that goes on the, the, you know, the kitchen fridge. It's all structured and sorted. Allowing three to four weeks, you may get an offer in the first stage. Obviously, it's gonna be on those conditions, so if it's good enough to accept and you say, you know what, Yanni, cancel the auction, that's okay too. The auction itself is where we invite our bidders, they register to bid, 
Uh, they see their competition in front of them and they bid to their best ability. Competition creates record prices. Should we not sell there? Obviously, uh, generally speaking, the next day or two after the auction campaign, we've got all that interest, we've got our conditional buyers joining in the race, and generally we sort out a deal. There's no reason why you wouldn't sell in stage two. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, if you really, really want to put a price on the property, give us 28 days and then put your price on the property. If we haven't done it on unconditional terms, you setting your conditions of sale as the seller and aiming for the best price possible. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure and we'll see you at our next one.